the new technologies were sometimes a mixed blessing. In the 1870s, a steam-powered drill was invented, quickly followed by drills powered by compressed air. Mine owners loved the new drill. It was much more efficient than the old hand drilling. With it, they could mine more silver and employ fewer miners. But the men in the tunnels called it the widow maker. As it drilled, it ground rock into fine dust, which shredded the lungs of the miners who breathed it. If you would get around some of these older fellows, you'd hear them breathing very hard and coarse, and you'd ask them what's wrong, and they'd say, well, I've got rocks in the box. And that meant that, the, that they'd been dusted. Because of this money-making innovation, hundreds were to die of what came to be called miners' consumption. But the deeper the miners dug, the worse their problems with drainage became. By the 1870s, it was becoming clear that not even the most powerful pumping systems could keep the Comstock mines in business much longer. At their upper levels, there was no more silver left to dig. As they went deeper, the miners struck bigger and hotter pockets of underground water, more water than even the giant steam pumps could handle. But the Comstock would produce one more flamboyant visionary, a man whose obsession proved to be the silver mine's last chance. He was a local cigar merchant named Adolf Sutro. Almost no one liked Sutro. Many thought him arrogant, abrasive, and rude. But he was also a brilliant and tireless promoter, and he had a dream. The Sutro talked to the mine owners. He said, why don't you let me dig a tunnel from the mouth of the Carson River, and I can connect uh, all the mine shafts, and we can drain all this water through my tunnel. Sounded like a good idea, and all the mine owners uh, supported it. For seven years, Sutro badgered bankers from San Francisco to London for enough money to dig his tunnel. He posed heroically for publicity photos designed to excite potential investors. Time after time, he was rebuffed. But like other Comstock miners, Adolf Sutro was not a man to accept defeat. Finally, in 1869, English bankers gave him enough money to begin digging. Sutro laid out the tunnel route himself. Battling cave-ins and floods of scalding water, Sutro's men hacked away at the stubborn Nevada earth. In 1878, after nine years of digging, they intersected the underground shafts of the Comstock mines, exactly where Sutro said they would. One of the hardest things to do is to, is to stay on target. And uh, I, as I recall, they missed it by a very, very tiny fraction of, of, of an inch. When they got to the end, uh, Sutro himself came down with a pick and stood at the uh, portal and pierced the wall with his pick. And a blast of air just about knocked him right through the hole because the difference in pressure from the outside to the inside was, uh, was that profound. When it was finished, the Sutro Tunnel was four miles long and ran 1,600 feet beneath the earth. It drained four million gallons of water every day from the Comstock mines to the Carson River. It had cost three and a half million dollars and 12 human lives. A railroad track ran its entire length. Next to the track was a channel for water. In Sutro's vision, mules would bring Comstock ore through the tunnel to be refined in the town of Dayton at its other end. Unfortunately, the Sutro tunnel was finished too late to solve the Comstock silver hauling or drainage problems. When Sutro began digging, the Comstock mines were about 1,600 feet deep. By the time he finished nine years later, the mines had gone nearly 3,000 feet deep, nearly twice as deep as his tunnel. And though the mules never hauled any silver ore, they were given a new mission, passenger service. It actually became an important uh, highway for supplies going to Virginia City from Dayton during the wintertime when the roads were closed. So you actually would have 
of society women going to events in Virginia City in their best clothes through the tunnel. But the Sutro Tunnel did make mine drainage easier. The steam pumps only had to raise the water as high as the tunnel, not all the way to the surface. But the tunnel never lived up to Adolf Sutro's promises. And Sutro? He was the first to realize that his dream was a disaster. He sold his interest in the tunnel before others could comprehend its failure and retired a millionaire. Upon hearing news of a strike at the consolidated Virginia silver mine in 1873, Bismarck ordered Germany off the silver standard. Modern marvels will return. Now on home video from the History Channel. Own your copy of this program delivered directly to you for just $24.95 plus shipping and handling. To order, call 1-800-708-1776 or shop HistoryChannel.com.